so true to life, it's a real breakthrough. Fuji's advanced technology has developed ultra-thin color layers unlike any other film in the world. The thinner the layers, the sharper the picture. Skin tones that we've never had before. For pictures so alive, they... While we aren't as spoiled for choice in the world of analog photography as we might have once been, there are still quite a few options out there for those of us who want to indulge in some sweet, juicy, analog goodness. Over the past few years, I've had the good fortune of shooting most of the films currently still being produced and many films that are no longer being made. And while it may seem like many of the cool, interesting films have fallen by the wayside, there's still quite a few gems out there for those of us still shooting film. And quite possibly the best film still currently being produced in the world is Velvia. And I don't want to oversell it for you guys, but this film is one of the primary reasons that I'm even shooting film to begin with. Maybe this story will be just a little bit embarrassing, but one day when I was in law school in a class called Administrative Law, learning about something to do with Chevron, I was browsing the interwebs on my MacBook, which is something that I want to do. I might have Googled something like best film or most colorful film. And wouldn't you know, at the top of the list was an article by the original online film photography gangsta, Ken Rockwell. I'm Ken Rockwell with KenRockwell.com. And just to be honest, I was browsing some of the images on his website and I thought they looked amazing. All of his Velvia images just had so much color, so much saturation, and they looked nothing like the digital images I was getting at the time. So I was sold. It wouldn't be long before I fell in love with those richly saturated colors and much to my wife's chagrin, I ordered a Nikon F100 promptly. But if we're being honest, the less said about that first roll of Elvia 100, the better. So let's talk a little bit about the history of Fujifilm Velvia and some of its characteristics. Fujifilm gives you color pictures so true to life, it's a real breakthrough. Fujifilm gives you color pictures so sharp, clear, and true to life, it's a real breakthrough. Fujifilm Velvia 50, or Fujifilm RVP as it was originally called, is a color reversal film, or what they call a slide film, which means that the film makes a positive image, and it's a transparency. You put it over projector, the image is projected on the wall, or your projection board, whatever, and you can see the image. That's in contrast to color negative film, the amber negatives that we oftentimes think of with film photography. Velvia is a positive. Fujifilm Velvia RVP was introduced in 1990. It quickly gained a reputation among film photographers, specifically landscape photographers, as a must-try film. It was out there giving Kodachrome 25, which was the original classic, you know, gold standard color film. Fujifilm RVP was there giving it a run for its money immediately. Most folks considered RVP to have a broader and more accurate color representation than Kodachrome, which made it very popular. The film also had twice the speed, much finer grain, and a vastly more accessible and easy to get developed E6 process. Most standard labs were doing E6. And it was for many of those reasons that after that, Velvia kinda took the crown from Kodak. Kodachrome's popularity started to tail off, ultimately ending production and development um, in the decade that came. Tragedy struck the hearts of many film photographers in 2005 when Fujifilm announced the discontinuation of Velvia 50. Fujifilm cited a number of reasons for this, the usual difficulty securing the materials to produce the film, also citing the decline in demand, but that discontinuation wouldn't be for long as the film would resume production in 2007. After the development of the original RVP film, Fujifilm then began work on Velvia 50. Velvia 50 would be the result of Fujifilm scientists and engineers' efforts to deliver a film that would deliver even finer grain and even better colors than the original RVP film. There were a number of reasons why Velvia 50 ended up surpassing the original RVP, and originally that was the fine grain structure of the film. Fujifilm, through their continued development of the film manufacturing process, Fujifilm was able to refine the formulation of RVP and deliver a product that had much finer grain than the original. Velvia 50 also incorporated Fuji's color coupler technology, and Fujifilm made additional tweaks to the color coupler technology that was incorporated into Velvia 50, again, further improving the colors over the original RVP. After significant development and testing, Fujifilm Velvia 50 was released on the world, and this release was lauded by film photographers who were super excited to experience the improved colors and image quality that it would deliver over the previous iteration of the film. And it wasn't too long after that that the film became a mainstay among professional photographers and solidified its legacy 
is one of the most important color films of all time. Let, bringing it to the present day, I'm going to show you some examples, and I'm going to start with some examples from a recent role that I shot back in the fall. Fujifilm Velvia is one of my favorite film stocks to use when color is important. And anytime that I'm going out to shoot fall color, um, I'm trying to pick a film stock that's going to accurately represent the colors that I'm seeing. If you pick a film that's maybe designed for portraiture or skin tones, uh, those bright colors can oftentimes be muted. But that's obviously not the case with Velvia. Anytime you go out with Velvia, you're going to expect very brightly saturated colors in lots of situations. Which incidentally makes Velvia perhaps not a great film to use on people. But for landscapes, for architecture, for anything like that, Velvia is a great choice. You can see as you go through these images just how broad the colors are and mostly they're really accurate. The images are very broad, the images are also very saturated, but the colors are very accurate. Something else that should be said about shooting Velvia, and I alluded to this previously when I talked about the very first roll of Velvia that I shot, the film has a very thin dynamic range and that's honestly pretty common with slide films. Any of your slide films are not going to have the same latitude that you're going to be able to get with a color negative film. If you're over exposing by two stops or more, you're probably in trouble with Velvia. So you're going to want to make sure that anytime you're out shooting Velvia that you're really taking care to meter those shots properly and make sure that you're getting exactly the exposure that you want or you'll end up wasting a roll of film. Not that I've done that. It goes without saying though, you take a look at the images that I shot, you take a look at some of the examples. This was a film that landscape photographers ended up adoring. So continuing on, let's talk a little bit about the significance of Velvia. Um, along with Kodachrome, Velvia is one of the most iconic film stocks in photography history. And this wouldn't be the last iteration of Velvia either. Following the success of Velvia 50, Fujifilm continued to iterate on Velvia and then came out with a new version of the film, Velvia 100. This new iteration of the film offered further refinements to the color reproduction capabilities while also granting some extra speed and maybe a little more flexibility to boot. Velvia 100 offered many of the same characteristics and the things that people loved uh, from Velvia 50. Maybe the colors are just a tad more subdued and I think maybe it would even be fair to say that the colors are more realistic as well, but Velvia 100 proved to be a popular film for Fujifilm as well. But almost since then, there have been concerns among the film photography community, uh, me included, that some of these films have been secretly discontinued by Fuji and that we're living off the vestiges of old stock stuck in their freezers. It never ceases to amaze me how much evidence is out there to suggest that Fujifilm really isn't making these films anymore. Um, you can see my most recent video about Fuji discontinuing new film orders in Japan and the weird quirkiness that's going on with their Superior film and perhaps some of their stuff being made by Kodak. I do think there's some lots on the dash flashing. I do think there's some lots on the dash flashing for Fujifilm and their interest in continuing to remain in the film game. There were further troubles for Velvia though in Fujifilm. On March 6, 2021, the EPA put forth a rule, and I'm gonna have to read this, that would ban one of the components used in the production of Velvia 100, and I'm gonna have to read this because these are big old words. And the problem the EPA points to is with a chemical called phenyl isopropylate phosphate. According to the EPA, this chemical um, is widely used for both flame retardant and lubricating properties, and has been used in the manufacture of rubber, foam, cotton, films, glues, engineering thermoplastics, all these different things. 
To make a long story short here though, this chemical that the EPA had banned was used in the manufacture of Velvia 100, which meant that Fujifilm was going to have to either reformulate Velvia 100 to not include this chemical, or they were going to have to suspend production of Velvia 100, or at least stop the export to the United States. And at least in the United States, they've discontinued the film, and that means your film stores are no longer going to be getting it. So at least in the United States, Velvia 50 is the lone remaining Velvia film stock that we can get. And you know, given the discontinuation of Velvia 100, the weirdness going on with Fujifilm's factories in Japan, and whether or not maybe they're not even making these films anymore, you should probably grab yourself a roll of Velvia 50 and shoot it before it's too late. I know there's so many of us out there who really wish we had taken that opportunity to shoot some Kodachrome while we still could. Many of us missed out on that opportunity. Sad to say, the day's probably coming soon when Velvia 50 will also likewise be a relic of the past. To conclude this video, Velvia 50 has left an indelible mark on the world of film photography. Its vibrant colors, its high contrast, and its fine grain made it a beloved film amongst film photographers. And frankly, the industry wouldn't be the same without it. Many of us still relive this film through our film simulations on our Fuji cameras, and many of us have downloaded Lightroom presets to mimic the colors of Velvia 50, Velvia 100. So the film will live on, even if the film stock does not. But let me know in the comments. Have you guys shot a roll of Velvia 50? What'd you think about it? And before you go, why don't you take a look at this video that I made recently about Kodak Ektar 25. But as always guys, thanks so much for watching.